try another one. Gaseous hydrogen. Oh, here's where we're using ratios of units. You might remember how that works. It's grams per liter if we're doing gases because they're not very dense. They haven't got much mass per volume. And so gases are value, have values that look a lot different. Measured at zero Celsius and gaseous chlorine as the density shown here, which is quite a bit more at the same temperature. So now we're going to see if we can use this in a calculation to make sense of it. How many liters of hydrogen would you need if you wanted 1.0078 grams of hydrogen? Hmm. We're looking for liters. We're given density. And density is a conversion factor. Be sure you think of it and write it out that way, and that will help. Because it's got a unit that's in a ratio of grams and liters. So if we have the starting value given right here, well, let's write it down. 1.0078 grams of hydrogen has the symbol of H2, you see there at the top. And we want to know how many liters this relationship called density is relating the two. It's an equivalence between grams and liters. So we'll set it up to make sure that the units will cancel. And when you do that, if we go 0 0.0899 grams per liter, and we plug it in. Wait a minute, what did we just do? We're going to get units that look like square grams? What in the world is that? That's a graham cracker. Oh, it's called a silly chemistry joke. A square gram is a graham cracker. Nope, we're not going to go that way. I just said we have to set it up to make sure the units cancel. So we'll do our 1.0078 grams of hydrogen. Now we're going to put it in carefully, pay attention, with the 0 0.0 eight nine nine grams in the lead on the bottom and the liter on top and now we'll put it in our calculators to come up with an answer all right ready set go get your calculator and see what you find pause it for a minute if that helps and the answer on the calculator display well what do you get so then we have to decide what to do with it i have eleven point two one zero two on my calculator Guess what? We have to decide about our sig figs. Again, this is multiplication and division. We do not want to keep more digits than either of the original values had. And then we have to figure out how many sig figs each of the original values have. Well, your density up here of the hydrogen has how many sig figs? These zeros are not significant because they're placeholder zeros. This would be a three sig fig value. And this mass of hydrogen is got zeros in the middle only and so those count and that is a five sig fig answer or value and so our answer better be only three sig figs and so we'll round this number to three sig figs because that would be appropriate for this calculation and that means we're going to drop it after the third digit the value is less than five no thinking required and it should be 11.2 oh i forgot the units the units should be liters, which is what we were hoping for. OK, so far, so good. Um, now, let's try the second one, and we won't set it up wrong this time. So if we want 35.45 grams of chlorine, chlorine gas, it's a green gas. So I'll use a green color. How about that? And we're going to find out how many liters that would be. So we're going to set this up using density here. The density value, just because we looked it up, not that anybody knows these numbers. And you'll set it up to make sure the grams cancel. 3.214 grams per liter. Again, get your calculator. Pretty sure no, none of us want to do this without one. And we'll calculate the value. Pause the recording for a minute while you get your re calculator out, because I'm going to do the same. All righty, so I get a value on my calculator. Let's see what the number looks like this time. I have 11.2, whoops, I can't write, wrong number. 11 point, put the right number in there, it'll work better. Ah, there we go. Um, zero two nine nine. Okay, how many sig figs do we want in this value? Think carefully, what do we have in our original numbers? All right, so what original numbers? How many sig figs in the density of the chlorine? This value here is all non-zero digits. They all count. They're all significant for sig figs. And the value given here is also for non-zero values. 
So we're going to take this to a four sig fig answer. Again, the first digit you drop is right there. It's going to be a nine. Well, then I guess we'll round up. So 11.03. And what was the unit? Oh, don't forget the unit. It's going to be liters. That's what we were hoping for. A good example of how to do calculations, think carefully and evaluate what the sig figs and answer should be. All right, let's do another density question. If you don't like the density question, skip this and move on. It's all the same to me. These are just available for your practice. There's the density of silver. What is the mass in kilograms of a cube of silver that measures 0.1 meter on each side? Well, this is going to require us to think about grams and kilograms and meters and centimeters cubed. Well, the cube of silver, we'll have to figure out what we have and what more is needed. We can figure out, we want the mass, and we can figure out, in addition to the density that's provided, we're going to have to figure out the volume. Oh, we need the volume. And remember that the, the volume of a cube is the length times the width, oh, I didn't write them in the right place, times the height, you get the idea. And so it's 0.1 meter on each side. So 0.1 m cubed, we don't like these, do we? It's the same thing as 0.1 times 0.1 times 0.1, or 10 to the minus 1 cubed. Hmm. If you're going to do multiplying of exponents, it's 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed. Well, here's where we get into challenges because we don't always remember how to use cubic units. So think carefully. Write out the steps. It'll help. I have to do the same. Otherwise, I'll make mistakes the same as anyone else. All right. So how do we relate cubic meters to cubic centimeters? Hmm. So what do you have to do? One centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. That helps us. You could also write 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. And from that, you can decide how many cubic centimeters are equal to in, in a cubic meter. Well, a meter cubed is going to be the same thing as 100 centimeters cubed. Oh, that's how that works. And so how do we write that? Think for a minute as I get the tool to cooperate here. Uh oh, I'll fix that. Sorry about the tool being uncooperative. Sure. One of the things we didn't do in 1615. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, time for another calculation example where we're doing conversions. And it doesn't look like a conversion problem, but it really comes out to be one. Um, the combustion of methane, which is CH4, natural gas, is going to release a bunch of energy. In this case, it's going to be 2498 kilojoules for 45 grams of methane. And how much energy would you get from this different value of methane? Not so bad, not as complicated as you might first think. All right, so what do we have? We have a relationship. 45 grams of methane are going to result in this number of kilojoules. And now we want to know how many kilocalories, oh, there's going to require a step in step, for this many grams of methane. Start where? That's the main trouble with unit problems, is you have to decide where you begin and where you need to go. We're going to start with grams. After I make this extra stray line go away, if I can. And I'll try it away. Sometimes you can't make them cooperate when you want. OK, so we're going to begin with grams. We're going to have to take the grams related to get to kilojoules, and then we're going to get from there to kilocalories. So each of these arrows will represent a conversion step. OK, set it up. Begin with the grams that you're given, 0 0.550 grams. And now in order to get to kilojoules, let's take those relationships in the first statement. The grams needs to cancel, put the 45 with it. And that correlates to the number of kilojoules shown. And if all things are set up right, <clears throat> some things should cancel on each step. Before I hit a calculator, I, my intent is always to set up a string of calculations. It helps. 
um, to reduce some errors. And now we're going to try to get this so that kilojoules cancels and kilocalories results. Well, now here's where you got to go pull out your book or flip back a few frames and figure out the conversion between the two because you might not have it memorized. The relationship between joules and calories or kilojoules and kilocalories is shown in your textbook on page 12 if you'd like to look it up there. But I will give you the number since I'm looking at it. One kilocalorie is 4.184 kilojoules. And notice if these are set up correctly, the units are going to cancel. And what do we got? Well, it's, now it's a math problem. So we simply get out a calculator and then we'll discuss the sig figs after we have a value from the calculator. Get your calculator and try it before you view my answer. All right, math fans, I hope you got the same number I did. On my calculator, the answer I see is 7.2. This device is getting tricky today. 7.29711. Wow! Do we even have a guess if this is right? Sometimes we don't, and so it's either wise to estimate or to recheck your calculations because these all look like weird numbers. <clears throat> and I will just tell you a, an estimation that I would use because I don't always trust myself to put the numbers in right either. So on the top you have 0.55 times 2498. So in other words, about 0.5 times about 2500 and half of 2500 is about 1250. That's the top. On the bottom, you have 45 times 4. Well, I don't know, 4 point something. And I'm not going to do it in my head altogether because I don't really want the actual answer. I just want to be approximating this. And so what's 45 times 4? Well, actually, I probably could. Because 4 times 4 is 40 is 160, and 4 times 5 is 20. So you add it together and you get 180. Or you think it out and you agree with me. Maybe you don't. But if you had to get at least that close, you could tell that the answer you have, by canceling out some zeros here, 125 divided by 18, the number should be less than 10. So this number looks credible, just as a way of showing you ballpark estimations are helpful. All right, now, how many sig figs? The sig figs are in the original values. You've got three sig figs here because the zero does count when it's after decimal. You've got four sig figs here. You can't have more in your final answer than you can even at least of the, at least in the original values. And this value, the zero does at the end does count, and the zero in the front does not count. And so that would be this value has three sig figs. So in your answer, we're going to take that to three sig figs, and I like to write it out so that I know that I've taken the steps and figured it out. So if you had 7.297, the last digit that is reported, it, or the, the digits going to be dropped is greater than 5, so we clearly have to round up, so you're going to end up with 7.30. You round the 29 up to 30. And the answer in this was kilocalories. When you write it down, you got it complete. There you go.